and your tenderness towards him will conquer all obstacles. You have so taken me aback, I, I cannot give you my answer immediately. I must take counsel with my advisors as to what is best for the kingdom. I am a queen. I may not follow my own desires as an ordinary woman may do. If it were not so, dear Count de Feria, you may take this message to your master. If ever I consider marrying outside this kingdom, then I will think of King Philip of Spain. Me as her friend, her advisor. She does nothing without consulting me. Have to see what an advantage that is to us. There's always somebody waiting to step into my place. Oh, I wish they would. Amy! <gasps> You've forgotten what it was like before, haven't you? You've forgotten what it was like to be penniless. When you came to visit me in the tower, you had to borrow the money for the journey from your father. You've forgotten all of it. Oh, he never grudged it. And at least I saw him there. Well, you're seeing me now. You say you want to see me. Here I am. <laughs> you know I love the country. We were very happy together, weren't we, when we were first married in Norfolk? Do you think I want to live in the noise and stink of London? But this is my chance. I know her. I know her better than any man alive. She never has to pretend she's with me, and that's more important to her than anything. And what happens when she marries? Well, that depends what happens now. The Queen must marry whether she wants to or not. And I must have a say in her choice of a husband. I must see which way the wind blows and add my puff to the others. Or the husband will blow me out of the court. Whoever sits beside her on the throne must know that I helped to put him there. People are saying that you don't want her to take a husband. That you want to marry her yourself. Well, how can I marry her? I'm already married. She's worse than 10,000 devils. Even Cecil says he doesn't know what she means to do next. As for me, I believe they know in Spain what is happening at the English court before I do. Well, you are the new Spanish ambassador. I wish you joy of the town. No matter what she says, she must marry. No woman can rule a kingdom. And moreover, uh, she must, if she can, bear children. If she can. Some say she cannot. But most believe that she can. At all events, she must marry. It is only a matter of bringing pressure to bear on her advisors to make the right choice. <laughs> Duke Derek of Sweden writes quite a lover's letter. He writes better than the Archduke Ferdinand. Your Majesty, the Archduke Ferdinand would never consent to be your husband unless you make England captain. Then I might as well have married King Philip. His brother, the Archduke Charles, would make fewer demands. He's a less vulnerable position. Yes, he will never be emperor. The only condition, Archduke condition. Charles, should make is that he should celebrate his own religion in public. Well, that seems reasonable. But I could never marry a man I had not seen. Well, you could hardly expect the Archduke to come courting. <laughs> He'll have to be assured of success. How could that be if I hadn't seen him? My sister married a man she had not seen. When he came to England and saw her for the first time, his face showed everything. She loved him, but he never loved her. 
I think he loved me more than he loved her. Do you think I would chance a marriage like that? No, Your Majesty. We would never have you marry any man you could not love. It is more important that he should love me, if I marry at all. Well, I will answer Prince Eric's letter. Is he really as good-looking as you say? I think he's very ugly, almost a fool. On the contrary, Your Majesty, a very pleasant-looking man with golden hair. Hmm. Well, I will tell him what I told him when my sister was alive, that I do not mean to marry. And what is the Imperial Ambassador to tell the Archduke Charles? That I will never marry a man I have not seen. I set out the advantages and disadvantages of each marriage under separate headings. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince Eric of Sweden, a Protestant marriage. His father is dying, he was shortly the king. He'll gladly come to England so that you can see him. I have told him not to come. <clears throat> well, meanwhile, he sent his brother, Duke John of Finland, with many rich gifts. Mm. Now, this marriage would displease nobody and would confirm your Protestant supports, but would bring no alliance with France or Spain. So unless is he really as handsome as you say? Tom Parry never could have two and two. Uh, does your highness mean always to audit the householder counts or so? As long as Tom Parry is my treasurer, yes. Uh, well, the Archduke Ferdinand, the Imperial Ambassador, assures me that he could never risk a Protestant marriage. So we'll... But he will be emperor one day. Well, that would mean changing your religion. Well, we could discuss all the details later. Is not to be entirely discouraged, then. No one should be entirely discouraged. Sooner or later, you must make a decision. You must marry. Must! For the sake of your people. Yes. That is the only must. Think of their terrors and uncertainties. Think of the foreign invasions and civil war to which they'll be subjected if the succession is not assured. Yes, and I have no intention of dying yet. Not yet, Your Majesty. Not for many years to come, please God. But you must consider the future. Not I. You. You are the spirit who wanders abroad, gathering knowledge from the stars, while I, I am the earth-bound mortal, the mere piece of clay, doing for the moment what must be done. Majesty, even spirit must have a habitation, unless you listen to what I say and act upon it. If I listen, it is enough. Poor spirit, do I vex you very much? Very much, Your Majesty, but a quiet spirit is a dead spirit, so I must not complain. No, you must not complain. Oh, France. Robin? Agreed. You stare at me too much. Your eyes are always on my face. Where else should they be? Wherever you go, we all turn to look after you like daisies to the sun. Looking about you to see how you may serve me. If there is any way that I can serve you, I shall see it first in your face. <laughs> Very well. I will bestow upon you the most important title in the kingdom. I will call you my uncle. <laughs> Rolling. when you stop looking at me... I never will. Your Majesty, the 
king of France is dead. Then Mary Stuart is queen of France. And it is said that she and her husband mean to lay claim to the throne of England as well. God, pity. Young King Francis is certainly ambitious at the age of 15 years to claim the crowns of France, Scotland, and England. He should have a care how he tries to take my crown. Or I'll take a husband to make his head ache. against the French region, declare for Aaron instead of Mary Stuart. With our help, you know the Queen has a horror of war. What she regards it as an offensive business. We shall never have another chance like this to throw the French out of Scotland, and our help could be given secretly. If the Queen marries Aaron, England and Scotland could be united under one crown. I hope, Lord Robert, that we shall receive your support in this matter with the Queen. Though I agree we shall never have another chance to throw the French out of Scotland. Of the other matter, the marriage. The Queen will never marry any man she does not love. Thank God he is married. Now, his child is the marriage might be allowed. Is it true the Queen has given him a present of 12,000 pounds? To help meet his expenses, admittedly, he had like a gypsy going about to see what he can pick up. He'd take from his mistress, he'd take from his friends. If he were not as suspicious as he is rapacious, he would take from himself. Oh, and the Queen marries all this will be over. If she marries with the Mickey, 